Hey guys, how you doing today? This is Gilbert with Interactive Utopia. And today I want to talk to you about working with your crypto wallet inside of your application. Uh, so, uh, you know, everybody's listening that, you know, crypto is the next big thing, the centralized signatures, uh, you know, it's, it's and, and, and it is, I believe that it is. So it's very important that we start uh, getting the grasp of it and understanding, uh, you know, how to work and interact with it. So uh, thankfully, by this time, there's a lot of frameworks that are already integrated with the major browsers. So it, it makes it a little bit easier to, to be able to interact with them. So in this Scenario, I'm just going to be providing you with us an example on how uh, you know how we can uh, have an app that it gets authorized to use the crypto wallet like MetaMask, and then once it's authorized, how to uh, sign uh, something, uh, how how to create a signature. Uh, we're not going to go into verifying the signature at this time. Uh, we're just going to have a, it's going to be. Uh, basic uh, bare bones but uh this way we can get a good understanding of how to start interacting with our crypto wallet okay so let's get started uh first and foremost of course i want to let you know uh, there's a lot of documentation online uh, on how to proceed when you're building an application uh, a couple of those areas that i i personally like is the MetaMask documentation. They, they have a lot of information in there. And of course, you want to read the protocol that we're using to uh, create the signatures. Uh, so in there, you can go to eips.ethereum.org uh, to uh, learn a little bit more about it as well. Okay, uh, so I did create a quick example to show you how uh, all this works out. Uh, so again, basically, you know, want to start by having our application, you know, the user is going to go to the application and, uh, you know, we're not just going to start, you know, creating, uh, requesting anything without their, their initiating the, the contact, of course. So uh, user goes to our application, you know, they, they want to interact with it. So the first thing we got to do is we got to create that authorization uh, to, to be able to work with it. Uh, think about it as, a, you know, a way of signing in uh, with no password you know they're just signing in with their with their wallet so um, the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna authorize the app our wallet is gonna come up and then uh, we're gonna use one of my test accounts uh, it's you know just requesting the letting us know that it's requesting our, our information our wallet address so we're connecting the connection went successful and uh, in this case you can see uh, my wallet number in here okay so if you want to leave any donations they always appreciate it <laughs> uh, once you are authorized by the user to interact with their wallet then you can create that information to um, you know create a signature so you know let's say you you know you have something you want to sign have the the user sign so you know we you you, you request that signature uh and then you know he'll take a look at it and then he'll be like okay everything looks good he can sign that back to you and then once it's signed you're going to get the uh the signature hash back so uh from here of course the next step would be to um verify that you know the the, the signature uh, it, it's it's proper that it's you know it has been received by the source that we're that we're expecting it from uh but again that would be for for the next video so uh for this how does it work how can we get our application to be authorized to work with uh the, the metamask wallet in this case and uh, how can we create how can we request a signature uh so for that let's take a look at the code Alrighty, so we're going into Visual Studio Code. Uh, I have two files right here. Basically, one is my HTML file, one is my JavaScript file. And, uh, you know, the HTML file, it's very simple. It basically, you know, on the top, we have our regular HTML uh, tags. We have our styling, which is very basic. You know, we're just of uh, centering stuff, you know, changing some fonts, adding a little bit of padding. Uh, but also what we're doing is 
Uh, basically, you know, it's a very simple application. So the way that I was able to achieve this is by creating a couple of different containers that were just hidden and then, you know, the display back the display was changed back to back to block uh once you know the the user did something you know javascript was taking care of that so you know we just had the, those three divs uh you know the first one is the the home uh when they haven't request you know when they need to authorize they, they do the initial authorization then when they're requesting the signature and then once that signature has been received Okay, uh, so pretty straightforward, uh, and of course we are including the JavaScript, where basically most of the actual code is going into. So let's you know let's make it a little big for you so that it's able easier to be seen. So the step one, of course, as I mentioned, is you want to request that authorization. Uh, you know you want to be able to interact with your uh, with, with with the user's crypto wallet. So uh, for that, you know, I created this uh, function called request initial authorization. But the most important thing is, you know, you're creating an Ethernum uh, request. This is something uh, that it's already on ma the major browsers nowadays, major mo modern browsers, let's call it. And the important thing that it's going to change is going to be the request accounts. Uh, this is for a simple request. You know, you can only do like one method at a time. Uh, if you wanted to do multiple once then you you're getting into something like contract but in this case again we're just keeping it simple uh we're so we're basically uh initializing the contact with the user's wallet and then we're requesting the account uh the wallet uh address you know the, the account address uh and then we're just going to be saving that into um a variable this variable we made it a, a global variable so that it's able to be used you know throughout the the process again just very simple application uh not you know we're not taking about safety or anything at the moment unfortunately uh but you know it, it, this way we can you know once we get that account we can store it and then we can use it once we are requesting that signature because that's going to be part of it okay so uh once we get the account uh if if everything goes okay then we're gonna be storing that account uh we're gonna be um uh you know basically we we change the the container you know how we had the three different containers we hit one container we display the second container and then we included that wallet account uh address uh in into that inner html you know from the um for, for the example that way you know you can the user can read his wallet address verify that it's the correct one they're, they're looking to be using um once we achieve that and we are authorized to use the application, then uh, we can create, uh, we can request uh, the signature. Uh, the latest version of this, uh, it's uh, type data version four. Uh, again, you can read a little bit more on the documentation. Uh, there's one, two, Oh, I'm sorry, I think it's one, three, and four. I, I'm not sure if there's a two. Uh, well, there, there should be. <laughs> but uh, but again, the version four, I guess, at this time is like the beta. It's in beta, but it's it's the it's the, the newer version. Uh, version three is supposed to be the standard uh, as of now. Uh, but, uh, you know, everything changes so quickly. So I would recommend starting to learn uh, in version four. There's only a couple small changes in there. Um so what do we need to do to request that signature? Uh, you know, basically we we gotta build our parameters for uh, what we're you know the the contract that we're requesting signature in, and then we need to you know make that request to the user for it to sign. So how do we do that? The message parameters, uh, you know, basically we are creating a JSON object uh from my you know json from a javascript object you know string yeah yeah basically we're we're it, we just need to create the json that we're going to be submitting so stringify it's it's an easy way for javascript to turn uh you know your your regular um 
object uh, strings into J JSON string. That you know that, that way it just kind of organizes everything for you. So the first section to your uh, JSON should be the domain. That is uh, that it's like your contract information. Uh, you know the the general information like. Uh, what chain uh, is it on? Uh, in this case, we're using, or, or you know, what network we're using? Ethernet mainnet. So that's uh, you know, num that's network number one. You can go online, and there's a couple of different websites that are gonna give you the different numbers for them. But Ethernum, you know, that's number. It's chain ID number one. Uh, you wanna give your contract a friendly name. Uh, you know, we're just giving it an initial example contract. Nothing fancy, but you can call it whatever you want. Um, you, we are verifying the contract so in here is where your um your contract address should go so that when you when you get the answer back you're going to verify that answer with the you know with the public um with your public uh address and a couple other different variables in there uh, again, you know, that's a, a little bit of a different subject, so we'll go over that on the next video. Uh, and then, you know, you want to give them their, the version of, of the contract, I, I suppose. Um, once you give the contract general information, then you need to provide the message that you need the user to sign. Uh, in this case, uh, you know, we're, we're just creating a request you know, please complete your authentication by signing this. And, uh, you know, we're just giving it a username. Uh, a, a lot of people like to use this as, a, uh, you know, an example to, you know, for a two-way two authorization login. Because when you, once you authorize your application, you know, anytime they go back to it, it's going to open up. But you want to make sure that it's the actual user, so maybe you want them to actually sign, you know, sign in, uh, and that way a lot of them have them connected with their phone and stuff, and they, you know they can verify. You can verify that it's the the correct person that's working uh, on 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 the application at that time. Um, so once we create that message, we need to uh, create the. Um, the object types uh, for the message that we're sending. Uh, so in this case, you know, we're just letting you know the, you know, like the the different uh, objects in uh, domain. You know, it's string, uh, integer, in integer. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's the address, it's string. So. Um, you know, you, you're just letting it know what what uh, what that object is, so that you know it can correspond with with the request that you're sending. Okay, so once your message is properly uh, properly set up, uh, then we can actually send the request. We're doing this by uh, window .ethereum .send async. Uh, so it's sending this asynchronously. And basically what it's going to be sending is, you know, we're sending the account, which we got initially uh, when we obtained the, the original request from the user. And then we're sending the message parameters for the signature request. The method that we're using, again, it's sign type data version 4. Uh, so we just need to save that. And uh, then we create, we create the asynchronous request. Uh, again, we're sending the parameters the account address from where uh you know we're requesting it to and uh the meta uh that, that, we're, that we're using at this time once we send that uh we need to check to make sure that there are no errors so if the user doesn't let's just say that he he doesn't agree with it that he cancels then he'll send that's going to send that back and create an error or maybe it wasn't uh, developed properly and there's an error in there so this is going to let you know what's going on uh, if it's signed, then you can always, you know, like log the results. But uh, basically, you know, what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be storing those result that that signature result in a new variable so that we can use it in the future to verify it uh, to make sure that it's, you know, it's coming from where we're, you know, from the wallet that we're sending it from. So, you know, if, if, uh, 
Bava and Melissa are, are creating this contract. You know, we want to make sure that Melissa is the one that's signing it. Okay. Uh, but again, at this point, you know, we're just uh, authorizing our application and creating the request uh, for that signature. Okay. And um, yeah, so hopefully this helps you. Uh, you know, again, there's a lot more behind it that that uh, that, that you're just seeing. Uh, this is a very simple example. Uh, you know, there is things like, you know, once the uses, uh, user authorizes your application, then, you know, you don't want it to you know, just go back to the initial homepage. You want to welcome him back. Uh, you know, once you, you create the signature, we want to, of course, uh, verify it. So there's a couple things that, that still need to be done. But again, this hopefully can get you in, in you know, the, the first step in the door and uh, guide you the, the proper way on how to integrate uh, crypto wallets with your application. Uh, Metas, MetaMask is, is the main uh, wallet that we use for this. But I, you know, if you have Coinbase, it is a very similar way. So you can, you know, it can work with that as well. Um, the, you can read out the documentation to see the, the different wallets and, and, you know, all the different integrations that can be done. Um, but, um, but yeah, so if you like the video, please do let me know. Or if you have any comments, leave them in the box below. And of course, uh, if you would like to see more videos from me, uh, it's subscribe to our channel. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be here to try to guide you and help you at the best that I can. Okay. Uh, thank you again. This is Gilbert with Interactive Utopia. And I, have you ha I hope that you have a great day. Bye-bye.